Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine, and this week we're hearing that the canal, which went off during the storm, is still giving up good numbers of fish. Um, we're also hearing that as we enter the fourth week of this tuna bonanza, still very good south of Block Island, south of the vineyard, and now we're seeing some giants out east of the Cape as well. Um, we're hearing about a post-storm good bite of big bass between Plymouth and Cohasset, Massachusetts. And we're hearing about scup fishing that continues to just light the world on fire from Buzzards Bay to the vineyard all the way out to the New York border and beyond. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's Web Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So the question that's on everybody's mind this week as, we, as we're coming out of the weekend, or as we were coming out of the weekend, was, uh, you know, what was going to happen with this tropical storm? What was Elsa going to do to the fishing? And uh, there were definitely a lot of questions that were left unanswered as we finished up the reports on Sunday night. Uh, since then, we've had, we've had some time to let the seas calm down and whatnot. And um, it's funny, throughout most of the region, the effects of Elsa were either a wash or they actually made things better. And that could be said pretty much from the North Shore of Massachusetts all the way around the Cape and then throughout Rhode Island. Uh, the one place that we are or that we see a that Elsa was somewhat of a detriment is the central Long Island Sound. Um, it's the influence of all those rivers. You know, you got the Thames River, you got the Connecticut River, which is the big one, and then uh, there are a lot of smaller tributaries that kind of run down to the sound in that area too. And it's just a lot of freshwater influence, a lot of silt, a lot of mud, a lot of debris. Uh, and it adds up to the fishing suffering for a few days. Um, now it's just kind of a waiting game to see how long it takes all that stuff to kind of dissipate. Um, the tuna bite stayed good. Um, and, you know, as I've been doing the last few weeks, I'm just going to kind of go go through the whole tuna game now so I don't have to keep saying it over and over again. Because, you know, we're hearing about guys throughout the entire region pretty much uh, making runs for this tuna bite, uh, particularly that area between Block Island and the vineyard, uh, you know, claw to coxes. I'm hearing about some fish at the dump this week as well. Um, it's just been so good. The numbers of fish are still great. Uh, they're still hitting, you know, all those same things are still on the still on the sand eels and um, squid bars and sluggo bars, things like that are, are getting it done. We're seeing a lot of fish in that, you know, say 30 to 45 inch range, you know, which is a nice, nice size. You can reel it in in, you know, less than half a day, like some of these other bigger ones that guys try to get on stand up. Uh, but there are some giants moving into that area now as well. And then as you make your way east of the Cape, um, you know, up to the Regal Sword and Crab Ledge and places like that, uh, there are some legit giants. You know, no, no recreational fish out there. You know, you've, you've got to have the commercial license to, uh, to participate. But there's some really big fish out that way. Uh, the other species that I like to do in these in this part of the thing is, is porgies or scup, just because, you know, it's a broken record thing. It's really good. Um, Buzzards Bay has been red hot. I talked to, uh, or I heard from uh, Black Rose Charters. They said that it was phenomenal this week. Um, I know it was phenomenal throughout Rhode Island. Saw some fish up to 17 inches that came from Rhode Island. And then out... Um, out in Long Island Sound, that is one fishery that hasn't suffered. They, those scup just seem to not care. Um, so I, I think the one thing that has stood out this week is that the guys that have been doing the most damage on porgies have been chumming with clams. So um, don't be afraid to throw a lot of bait in the water. You can get those fish biting pretty good. And um, the action can be red hot. Uh, now let's head over into Massachusetts and start with stripers as usual. Um, I talked to James Jukes up on the North Shore. He said Elsa was no big deal up there. Um, he said that in particular, guys chunking them off the Merrimack River have been doing very, very well. Uh, fish up into the 40-pound range there. He said the biggest one that he saw personally was 48 inches this week. Um, night guys are doing well on swimmers and eels. He, um, he said he had fish up to almost 40 inches this week, and he said it actually was very good. 
Uh, I didn't hear anything from the Boston area this week. Um, that's one thing, too, about this whole storm thing. You know, a lot of people fish on the weekend. We didn't get as many photos this week as normal. But, you know, so it's, this report will be heavy on information and might be light on images. Uh, but one thing I did hear is uh, from Belson's Bait and Tackle. Um, in that area from, you know, um, Plymouth area up to Cohasset and that little kind of corner there, uh, the bass bite really lit up this week. And it's, it wasn't a result of the fish finding the pogies because those blew out with the storm, but they were replaced by phenomenal mackerel fishing. And um, where there's mackerel, they're typically bass. And they had reports of fish up to 40 pounds um, from various locations uh, in that area. Said so the only thing that's been a detriment is the fog. Uh, a lot of guys aren't able to get out just because it's so thick. Uh, but they've heard of some good fish from the surf, and uh, on those clear days, the boat guys are crushing it. And then heading out onto the Cape proper, uh, I did hear the backside of uh, Race Point had some fish, had some had some pogey schools, and some decent sized fish running the beaches there. Um, I talked to a friend that fish head of the meadow this week, and he said that uh, there were so many seals there, he... Uh, Pretty much just turned it into a seal tour and went home early. Um, on the outer beaches, from what I heard from the goose hunting shop, not much has changed. Um, there are still schools of slot sized fish, schooly sized fish, uh, all throughout the you know that sort of northern portion of the um, of the outer beaches. Um, there's no guarantees. There's no hot spot. It's sort of a hunt and peck thing. But when the guys get on them, they are doing well. Uh, didn't hear much from the lower Cape this week, but I did hear that um, after Elsa blew through, the Monomoy Rips saw a good shot of some bigger fish. They aren't giants, but they're, you know, fish in the 34 inches up to 40-something inches range, you know, low 40-inch range, and there's been a pretty good number of fish there. Uh, out in the vineyard, it's been kind of so-so. Uh, from what I've been hearing. Still mostly schoolies out there. Uh, decent numbers of bluefish, but it's been kind of, you know, bass-wise, it's just uh, not as good as it was two weeks ago. Uh, Buzzards Bay has been really slow for stripers, but the canal exploded. Um, I'm sure you already know that. Uh, as soon as these northeast winds started to pull uh, from Elsa, that place just kind of lit up. I know I said last week that I would have guessed that the canal would have a mediocre week. And, uh, but I also said I hoped I was wrong, and I was. Um, I didn't take into consideration those northeast winds, and they really did make a difference this week. They blew squid and small mackerel into the canal. And, um, you know, you're hearing about all the biggest fish, but the, from what I've been hearing, like I talked to Greg from Red Top, and he said the average is more like a 20-pound average, still a solid fish, uh, but fish up well into the 40-pound class, and rumors of fish even bigger than that in there. Uh, for most of the end of last week, there was a phenomenal topwater bite. As the as time has passed and the tides have gotten later and later into the day, it's kind of become more and more of a jigging thing. And uh, but even even in the heat of the heat of the blitz, uh, the better way to get the bigger fish was jigging bottom. Uh, let's see. So sea bass fishing has been. It seemed like it got a little bit better in Buzzards Bay this week. Uh, that news came by way of Black Rose Charters as well. Uh, said he wasn't having too much trouble finding uh, decent sized sea bass in Buzzards Bay uh, in some of the deeper holes. Um, if I had to catch one, I would still hit that little triangle area that I've talked about the last few weeks, you know, Nomans and Cuddy Hunk and uh, the Vineyard. That seems to be the hottest area. Um, but even if you head out toward like Westport and the in the uh, Rhode Island line, you get on some of those deeper rocky spots out there, and you're gonna find some decent sea bass. I know Jason Colby uh, from Little Sister Charters has been doing well in that area. And then um, we talked about tunas. We're not gonna talk about scout fluke fishing. I still still not hearing a lot. Um, I did hear that there's been some fluke up around the North River, which is kind of a seems unusual to me. I think. Um, Maybe I don't know that what that area as well as I hope I do or think I do, but uh, I know there's been some there. 
I'm sure that there's fish at Nantucket Shoal, but again this week we just had crazy, crazy weather, crazy seas, and probably not a lot of guys, if any, have been out there. Uh, bluefish wise, like I said, there's been some on the south side of the vineyard, Chappaquiddick and places like that. Um, probably one of the better places to go looking for bluefish is always going to be that upper Cape area. Uh, I know there's been some small bluefish at the North River uh, also out in Situate. And then um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is just, I know, I talked to Elliot Sudal. You guys may follow him on Instagram, Axe Sharks. And he said that the shark bite out on the out of Nantucket has been unbelievable uh, the last couple of weeks. Uh, a lot of species, a lot of big fish, and um, I've heard about some guys getting them from the vineyard. And I'd have to assume that places like South Cape Beach, and um, you know, up along the Falmouth beaches and whatnot, there's got to be uh, there's got to be some shark action there as well. If that's if that's your thing, um, and you haven't started, I wouldn't wait another day. And that's pretty much the story that I have for you in Massachusetts this week. As we push over into Rhode Island, um, the striper bite is really kind of modulating further and further out. Um, if you're looking for near shore action, uh, the best places to find it, uh, especially if you're looking for schoolies and slot sized fish, is still that north end of Jamestown. Um, those fish have been hanging, they're hanging on, and they've been there for more than a week now. There's, uh, there's bluefish mixed in, uh, and the action's been pretty good, and the best way to get them is either live bunker or chunk bunker. If you're looking for big fish, uh, there are some big fish off of uh, Jamestown, there are some big fish off of Newport, but it's, uh, it's much more sporadic if, you, if, you've got the, if you've got the weather and you've got the time. Uh, Southwest Ledge has been loaded with big fish and you don't even, you know, they're all inside that three mile line. They're not seeing too many boats breaking the law out there. Um, and there's been a lot of, a lot of smaller fish than normal. A lot of 20 to 25, 30 pound fish out there, which is not the, not the usual, uh, at least not what you usually hear about. There are some of those giants out there too. I mean, you could basically say there's fish from 20 pounds to as big as you can imagine out there. Uh, but the action has been very good. Uh, GT eels have been working very well. And um, obviously live eels are crushing it. Uh, that's, that's definitely the best area to go um, if you're looking for stripers in Rhode Island. Uh, also, Watch Hill Reef area has been producing some, some bigger and better fish as time goes on. Uh, Harrison from Watch Hill Outfitters sent me a couple pics of him and his girlfriend. Uh, they had some good fish um, on Tuesday night. And uh, those were all caught on uh, GT eels. Uh, bluefish wise, it's been kind of a crazy mix. Um, you're definitely seeing, I'm seeing the most or hearing about the most bluefish action still in the lower reaches of the bay on that warmer water, but these fish are not big. They're, you know, five to four, even four to seven pounds at the most. I think most of these fish are in that four to five pound range. Uh, there are some bigger fish uh, out off of Newport, out off of uh, Beaver Tail. Uh, but it's, you know, it's driving around and looking for them. I, we got this picture from that salty blonde on, uh, on Instagram. She's got a couple decent bluefish here that she, uh, that she got off of, uh, off of Newport. And then, um, you know, it's kind of a broken record thing. But if I had to find one, um, I'd probably spend some time fishing around the breachways. That, you know, water pumping out of there with all that bait is always going to be a magnet for bluefish. Doesn't mean they're going to be big, but you know there's going to be some fish there. Uh, fluke wise, sounds like it's slowed down a little bit uh, over this past week. Could have something to do with the storm, who knows. Um, but their guys are still getting them off of Musquamacate. In fact, there was a really nice fish reported by Snug Harbor Marina, 14 pounder. Unfortunately, there's no photo, but um, that just goes to show that there's still some big fish uh, around. Block Island's still producing fish, a lot of dogfish out there. Um, but you know, that's kind of where everybody goes to get fluke around the windmills. A lot of dogfish there. Um, and there's been a lot of fluke still at the east grounds. Um, and then also kind of getting up closer to the island now, um, there's been, the fluke action has been picking up. So those are the, uh, you know, those are the, those are the best areas right now to catch fluke in Rhode Island waters. And um, 
Now I'm going to throw it over to uh, Mike Wade from Watch Hill Outfitters, and he's going to give us a little breakdown of what's happening in their neck of the woods. Hey guys, it's Mike at Watch Hill Outfitters, just touching base with you for the week. Had a great big storm come through, but just before it, me and Tommy got out there, did a little fluke fishing with the family, had some nice solid 25, 24 inch fluke just off of Block Island. The other big news that they're talking about is tuna. Everybody's talking about it. Lots of people are going out there getting basically some smalls. I do hear about some giants being caught. Very exciting fishing. A little bit rough. That storm really washed a lot of the stuff out. But now we've got some clean water coming through. And I'm even hearing about fluke being caught as close as the breachways and, and over by the docks. So definitely get out there fishing. Get part of it. Tight lines. Have a great day fishing. Also, hey, we got a shop dog. Guys, this is Ruby. She's the new shop dog. Say hi to her when you come in. She's kind of tiny, but she's fast. Hope you get to see her. And uh, let's move over into Connecticut now. And as I said, as I alluded to in the intro, you know, it's Elsa has kind of beat Central Connecticut up a little bit. Um, anywhere around the mouths of these rivers and even kind of getting out to like Southwest Reef and Six Mile Reef and probably areas to the east of there as well. There's just a big freshwater plume, a lot of mud and a lot of, uh, you know, logs and stuff like that floating around out there. So not only is it a hazard, you know, for, for boaters, uh, but the water's dirty and there's a lot of freshwater influence. So it's kind of messed things up. Um, TJ from Rocket World Charters told me that, you know, those first few days after the storm were phenomenal. Great bass fishing, great blue fishing, uh, sea bass and scup were on fire. And then, you know, this... This, you know, the mud line just kind of crept out there and just messed things up. And he said, you know, he's he's putting together trips, but um, he said it's it's a grind. You know, it's much tougher uh, to put fish together right now or put a catch together right now. And the same thing um, came from Mike Roy of Real Catch Charters. He said, you know, that water came down the Connecticut River and it just made things a lot tougher. It pushed a lot of those fish that were right there in the mouth of the river out. Um, still getting some nice fish. He sent me a picture of a good one that one of his clients got uh, the, the other day. But, you know, it's a grind now. We're working a lot harder to, uh, to get those fish. Uh, heading west from there, the Norwalk Islands have had some really nice fish. Uh, bunker spoons has been a really good way to get them. Uh, we heard about two really big fish, um, you know, low 50-pound fish taken in that area. And then kind of getting into the rock piles and... Um, you know, you know, all those rocky points and stuff around the islands. Uh, guys have been doing really well on like 18 to 30 pound fish. Uh, Chunk Bunker has been like the A plus number one way to go there, but you can get them on live bills, you can get them on live bunker. Uh, you go out at first light, you might pick one up on the dock. Um, but the action's been very, very good there. Uh, and also, that that part of the western part of the sound isn't doesn't have that same freshwater influence. So the the fishing has kind of weathered the storm a little bit better in that area. Uh, Fluke-wise, it's been a little bit slower since the storm. Uh, probably has a lot to do with the fact that a lot of the a lot of the better reports I was hearing last week were coming from the uh, you know the area around the Connecticut River. Um, so I didn't hear as much overall fluke-wise, but I know that guys have been getting some. You know, let's let's put it this way. They've been putting some keepers on the boat behind fishers. It's just been it's just been a bit of a struggle, you know, to get through all the shorts. And then heading out toward Norwalk, they had some decent fish this week. They had some fish, you know, almost double digit fish, eight nine pounders, uh, fishing fifty feet of water. And um, that seems to be the two best places. One thing I forgot to mention in the striper part too is that the race had a lot of fish this week. Um, Lots, you know, a decent number of slot fish, too, you know, and a lot of them right around that 32, 33, 34 inch range um, with some five to six pound bluefish in the mix as well. Uh, sea bass was red hot before the storm in the central sound. It's been a little bit more of a struggle, but if you get into some of those deeper humps, you know, 65 feet or more, uh, I think that freshwater just doesn't influence that as much and probably that silty stuff stays floating up a little higher. Uh, that's where the bite has been in the central sound. It's been the same story out west. Um, you know, that 60 to 70 foot range has been the best uh, 
best bet. Now in the western side, it's a lot more muddy, silty bottom, so you got to find the little piles of rocks and wrecks and whatnot, but, um, but most of those spots are holding fish right now. And um, that's the story for us in Connecticut. We didn't get a video from Max this week. I talked to him today, and he was stuck on the side of the road with his boat trailer, uh, <laughs> the brakes on his boat trailer or something like that. It was hard to tell for sure what the problem was, but something went wrong, and I think he's waiting for a tow truck. So we're going to let him off the hook this week. Um, but that's, that's the story in Connecticut. And now, um, before I say my goodbyes, I'm going to throw it over to my field correspondent, Dave Anderson, with an update with the for the uh, coastal kayak clash take it away dave in the coastal kayak clash uh we've had another lead change this week uh bob wagner came in with a sea robin that was good enough for third place but that also knocked justin oser out of contention in the sea robin category which took a point away from justin added one to bob and now they're in a virtual tie for first place with seven points apiece there are some other guys on the board that are worth looking at Eric Lopez is just off the leaderboard with five points. He's one fish away from uh, from crashing the party here at the top of the leaderboard. Ken Stark came in this week and gave himself four points, which puts him within striking distance of the lead as well. And Matt Bra Mike Radzizewski, rather, um, with, he had that beautiful weak fish earlier in the tournament. He's got a first-place finish and a third-place finish, and he's one fish away from uh, crashing the party at the top of the leaderboard as well. If you're a kayak guy and you're looking for a way to uh, to compete with your fellow kayak fishermen, check out the kayak class. You've got to be a subscriber to the fishermen to participate. It's a phenomenal tournament, phenomenal prizes. Come check us out. Thanks a lot. I am going to ask you guys, anyone who watches this, to you know send me send me a report, send me your photos. Um, especially this week was tough. Usually I can put together a pretty good stack of picks, but uh, with Elsa coming through and uh, you know. A lot of guys are reluctant to go out afterwards. Um, picks were lean, but I'm, I'm always looking for picks. Happy to, would love to feature you on the uh, on the report. Happy to give you a uh, a social media mention too. You know, maybe I can get you a half dozen more followers or something like that. Um, and if you're watching the report for the first time, or if you're if you haven't yet, um, you know, click that. Click that subscribe button down there and uh, hit that little bell thing too, so you can get a uh, so you get a notification every time we post something new. We're putting up new stuff all the time, and head over to thefisherman.com and see what we got going on there as well. Um, subscription is well worth the money. You know we've got we've got reports that cover the entire Northeast from Delaware all the way to Maine. Uh, feature content that comes from all those areas. You get access to all three editions, all the reports. Um, there are two tournaments that you can enter that give away phenomenal gear that's only you know, only available to subscribers. And, um, you know, it's worth it. Come over and check it out. We'll see you guys next week. Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.